evening all so here we go we're gonna do another bit of a run gun comment discuss and you know that usual good stuff um playing here as my minmatar alt um mainly because i'm kind of having a bit of fun with mass drivers at the moment but um maybe before we kind of get going let's just talk quickly about the weekly skill cap um i learned something about this last night that i guess a lot of you probably know but it's worth just sharing for those that don't you, you know obviously now we have a weekly skill cap and what that means is that you have a, a set time to get to a particular level of skill points and then the rate slows down uh, pretty significantly so for example you could run a skirmish like this uh, you could have a pretty moderate game and you may get 10,000 skill points you can do that pretty much continually to we believe around maybe 150 to 190 skill points and then if you have boosters that obviously gives you uh, you know a percentage above that but once you hit that kind of level you are then only going to get maybe a thousand skill points per map so it, it reduces quite significantly now we didn't really kind of uh, maybe look at this in too much depth but let's just very quickly talk about the mechanics of this because what actually happens now is every Wednesday that skill cap gets reset regardless of where you got to in that skill uh, cap process the week before so for example if you skill capped up to your exact maximum on the Tuesday and then you play on the Wednesday you'll be you'll just keep going yep so you'll still get the, the, you know, the same amount of skill points as you did um, if you if you capped half of your skill cap on the Tuesday and then you hit Wednesday your skill cap resets and then you start playing again you don't get the half that you lost that's effectively un unclaimed skill points that you just didn't play enough to get if that makes sense so just to be very clear and that that's our current understanding if you disagree with that and if you maybe know more if you're ccp <laughs> please post in the comments and tell us because as far as we're concerned that be, we believe to be the mechanics of it so every wednesday at downtime the skill cap resets and you basically can then use um, or rather you can begin skilling again on uh, your mains and whatever it may be so that's kind of the i guess the first point out of the way it's an important point because i think a lot of people are really kind of key to you know they're keen to not like play without getting any skill bonus for it and i can see why because it does feel like you're playing for nothing but um, i would remind you that isk is its own reward <laughs> but, but anyway that's another topic um, I think one of the th key things as well is, you know, we've heard rumour of talk that they may actually remove the skill cap entirely. Right? You know, this may be when the game is fully released or this could be an upcoming patch, but I just think at the moment there is, there's kind of talk afoot to maybe change the skill cap away from it just giving you, you know, certain skill points for certain functions. It'll, it may just be based on the war points. So you'll get less skill points, but you'll, you'll, you know, it's more in your fate to actually control the skill points you get if you, if you understand that. So, you know, interesting. I think that could be a quite an interesting development. Um, and we'll keep you posted on that one. We're, we're really kind of keen on the whole mechanic, so um, we'll keep looking at that one. So, I mean, kind of what else has been happening? We've had some really good feedback in terms of some of the videos. I think the tactics ones, hopefully you've seen the tactic maps. They're a real blast to do. They're a bit of a pain in the ass to actually edit, but <laughs> to be honest, it keeps me on my toes. Um, but to me, the tactics maps are pretty much, I think, key to, uh, to, to doing because if you're going to play on any map, you want to understand the area around you. And I think with the thing with the tactics um, spotlights, if you like, is that is you get appreciation of perhaps where to play spawn pads, perhaps where to snipe from. It's also just the ability to maybe understand which you know, cluster of of control points and CIUs and supply depots and all that good stuff are actually really key because you know with this map for example if you can keep this map's complex tight you know locked down so that's a b and c then it doesn't matter about d and e because the reality of it is it's just a numbers game then but um, keeping this complex locked down is actually easier than you could think because unless they use drop ships or unless they have spawn pads put in if you can just keep the gates and the access points closed because there's only f what three gates and um, was it two gates? No, there's three gates, and then there's the stairs by B. You can actually keep this map pretty locked down. But anyway, that's another story entirely, um, and we'll we'll probably keep looking at those uh, maps as we go. Just a thing for everybody. I'm sure you've all seen this, but if you if you actually go into your map view by pressing the down arrow and then doing um, an L1, I think it's L1, L2, sorry, you zoom out. It's probably worth just doing that if you've not done that yet. You'll then appreciate perhaps the size of the map that we're actually going to get eventually. Now, if you can, I'm sure when you go and do that, you'll look at the size of the map. This is when I think drop ships are just going to be critical because you know you're going to need something like a drop ship or a fast LOV to get around. Tanks may be fine, okay, but 
I think really this is going to be where um, the game is going to become almost almost kind of when they switch that on, it's going to become an entirely different game. It's not going to be PvP in close quarters anymore. It could even be, you know, mid-range, long-range tactical gaming, which I think is pretty cool. I'm looking forward to it. So, you know, it will give the railgun tanks more bit, uh, more more teeth. It will give things like forge gunners a bit more of a role as well. So. I think it's well worth doing and that's if you go to your map just press L1 I'll, I'll put it at the end of this video I'll just include a little bit of a snippet of video where you zoom out and you'll see actually how big these maps really are it's just everything's restricted at the moment that's obviously um, part of the process of the beta but one day that will all be open to us and then drop ships <laughs> which I've skilled for will be uh, they'll pay dividends let's say um, so some really good questions coming in as well. I mean, I've had some really great um, comments. One of the things probably to uh, just very quickly go and talk about is um, I've actually got Weaponry 5 on all of my characters now. I've got three characters and I've actually purposefully put level 5 weaponry on all of the characters because I, I believe in the gank style play whereas and as you can see I got gank right there <laughs> so that was pretty pretty annoying but I get my revenge don't worry stay tuned I get my revenge on that <laughs> but I believe Eve to me was always a game where you basically just want to out damage and out you really just smash out your your opponent you know you you've got the baseball bat with the with the you know the nails <laughs> nailed right through it because to me I think it's all very well tanking but I think a lot of the time you just want to finish your opponent as quick as possible and get the hell out so I've gone weaponry 5 so I can use the 10% damage bonds um, you can get them with Aurum at level 4 um, but the way I see it is at level 5 they're only 10k each so they're, they're quite reasonable actually um, and I think one of the uh, the key things that I want to do is every suit I have now is pretty much set for damage. And I'll probably do a quick suit spotlight as well, um, maybe after this video um, in the next one, because the suits to me are really evolving. As you get more skill points and as you get more involved with the game, you pick a play style that you enjoy. And I actually pre would prefer just to do as much damage as quick as possible and GTFO. So and that's entirely my call. There are people who I think prefer to tank, which is fine. So. You just need to find your kind of niche. What do you prefer doing? And I think with the 10% damage mods, and I was asked a question by, who was the gentleman's name? Um, uh, by Hateful Munitions, thank you very much for your comment, about the stacking penalty. Because in EVE, if you have two damage mods, the second uh, mod does not apply to its full. It's actually an exponentially decreasing um, uh, penalty to you. Now, that should be the same in Dust, but it's not currently working. So if you put two 10% damage mods on, you get 20% damage output. Um, and, and to be honest, if you think about that, uh, with an assault rifle like the GEC, or with a, um, a laser rifle, or, or even an, a, a mass driver or something like that, adding 20% damage to it, you know, just sudden, you know, almost instantly makes it a phenomenally different gun because you're not necessarily trying to dance around and and party with your <laughs> with your foe. You're actually looking to basically get them down as quick as possible and kill them. Particularly when you think about sniper rifles as well, two 10% or even if you can got the suit, you could fit three 10% damage mods and so on. So, you know, that's called ganking. I mean, that's the t in Eve, that's very classically always been called like you know, Gankageddon's. There's a ship called the Armageddon. It's a great Great big battleship and basically you just fit it for all lasers and all all damage mods because you're not interested in in slugging out a, a fight here you're actually just interested in out damaging your opponent so brutally and badly that they basically don't stand a chance and that's i think pretty similar to what we're doing here is just you know really out damaging your opponent also with the forge gun it's worth looking at as well because the forge gun can be set to do some significant damage for its primary hit but it can also do splash damage up to quite a notable value as well so um, have a consideration it's well worth looking at um, for I think for what we do um, okay so you know <laughs> I think to be honest uh, you know, um, it doesn't always work look like that dude I should have killed him but for some reason I didn't um, but it was a good match and we won and um, hopefully enjoyed that but I think in terms of where we are we've still got the channel open kicking dust we've been playing with some of the dudes in there thank you so much it's been awesome if you have anything particularly you would like me to film then let me know if you guys have offered to show me their tanks which sounds a bit rude but um, also looking if somebody has a particularly pimped out dropship then send me an email or send me a, a, a link or just contact me and kicking dust because I'd love to do some more dropship videos um, but there we go hope you enjoyed that we'll see you next time.